Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, I'm gonna to be I'm gonna be talking to you about something that I've been asked many, 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 many times. So hopefully, this video is really gonna help any of you Amazon sellers out there or people looking to start. This is something that you're gonna to want to know. And it's basically, why do you get messages every single day from Amazon that says message cannot be delivered to buyer? Okay, and is there any ways to get around this? So I'm gonna to go to I'm basically gonna go through this in this video. Make sure you're subscribed with those notifications turned on. Leave any questions down below. Let's get into it right now. All right, so what I've done, guys, uh, to make this a little bit easier and, and instead of showing you my, my email account, um, I've actually copy and pasted the actual email that gets sent to you from Amazon. And of course, I've got rid of the order number so you guys can't, can't go and check out what we're people are selling and stuff. Um, so it says, dear seller, I'm just gonna read this out first of all and explain a little bit about what it is because um, if you send emails to your customers on Amazon, which is a very good idea by the way, um, so I personally use JumpSend, which is service, go and like, Google it, look it up, and it does a couple of things, but one of the things it does is that it automates emails to your buyers at certain trigger points. And what is a trigger point? It's when something happens. So for example, when a customer buys the product, they get an email sent saying, hey, thank you so much for buying, got some information in there, whatever. Uh, then maybe uh, when it's dispatched, it says, hey, your item's been dispatched, it'll be with you very, very soon. You know, if you need any questions answering, if you have any whatever, let us know. Okay, another email. And maybe three days after the product arrives, is delivered at the door, they'll get another email saying, hey, we hope you enjoyed your, your product, you know, please leave us a review, blah, 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 blah. So, um, you know, there's, there's loads of stuff you can go and look at to create those emails, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this email that you get back from Amazon, and you know, why does it happen? So. Every time an email is sent to a, a customer, if it doesn't go through, you are gonna get this email. It doesn't matter if it's the first email, the second email, the third email, you're gonna basically, every time jump send or the email service tries to send an email, you're gonna get this email back, okay? So um, what this is, is when a customer has opted out of being, I'm literally gonna read it right here, because the buyer has chosen to opt out of receiving unsolicited, unsolicited messages from sellers, because this is message, they didn't want this message, it's not imperative to the use of their product, so they don't want it, okay? And the reason why Amazon is like cracking down on this is because of spam, because of nuisance sellers that just email people all the time. And you know, we don't wanna be doing that sellers, we don't wanna piss off our customers, we wanna provide them a good service. So yes, this is, is annoying, but also it's a good thing that it means that people really have to restrict what they do and only email people when they actually really need to. So <clears throat> let me go through here and explain um, what to do and what not to do because there, there, is, there is something in here that says, hey, if you wanna get in contact with them, this is here, and this is what you do. Please guys, don't do it unless you follow these guidelines. So let's get into it a little bit. So let me just read this. However, if a buyer has opted out of unsolicited messages, and if you need to send them a message, critical, this is important, critical to completing his or her order, you can include the word important, important, just there, right? In the subject of your message, or use the buyer seller's messaging interface on Seller Central. Okay, so this is this is so critical, right? If it is actually critical, if it is important, if it's like, um, if you've seen those um, like teeth whitening kits where you have to send the mold off, right? So you do the mold and you send it back. Um, that might, you know, that you might need to know some information that's critical to the to the you know, the, to that product, or if it's a color variation or a customization, again, it's critical to the product. So those are times when you can put important in the actual title. Um, should you do this if it's not important? I'm not sure, okay? But here is an example of what is considered critical and what is not considered critical, okay? So you might be surprised by this. Product customization questions are critical. Delivery, scheduling, critical, Issues with shipping address, address, they are critical. What is not critical? I know this is what you wanna see. What is not critical? Following messages are not critical. Requests for seller feedback or customer reviews. Not critical, guys, they're not important. Order shipment or delivery confirmations. Again, they, they get them from Amazon anyway, they're not important. Proactive customer service. This is the one that's really annoying, okay? Proactive customer service, for example, product manuals, tips for using the product, FAQs, suggestions if something goes wrong. This is the one that is super, super annoying because if you're using an email follow-up service for an ebook, for example, you are, you know, these customers won't receive the ebook. So, you know, how do we make sure that our customers don't get annoyed with us? And I'm gonna explain that right now. If you offer an ebook with your Amazon listing, don't pull a lot of attention to it. Although we want to pull a lot of attention to it because maybe it's a really cool bundle or something like that, it's an extra. However, a lot of your customers are not going to receive the ebook 
and they might get in touch with you, say, hey, I haven't received it, or they might leave negative feedback saying, I didn't get the email um, ebook. So what the hell are you gonna do? So what, what I would suggest doing is have the ebook as a really pleasant extra. So if someone does accept the emails, then they're gonna get this ebook. It's like, oh, it's like an extra. It's something additional to my listing that I really wasn't expecting. Of course, you can put it in the listing, but don't really pull a lot of attention to it saying, my God, everyone gets this free ebook. Because guys, not everyone's gonna get it. Like a lot of people opt out of these unsolicited messages, unsolicited messages. Now, bear in mind as well, that if you're sending three emails or four emails, you're gonna get four email replies from Amazon saying, didn't work so bear in mind that although one customer may uh, have unsolicited emails it actually you might receive two or three or four basically postbacks um, saying that they didn't you know they didn't get it so obviously take into consideration when you are thinking oh my god I'm getting so many emails every single day you know it's it's repeat customers it's not repeat customers it's repeat emails for the same customer so what is a better way to do this? What is a better way to get your ebook to people um, if you need to get an ebook to people? And you're gonna do that through product inserts, um, the packaging, and then maybe your own website or email service, okay? So what you can do is on your packaging or on a product insert, so a little slip that goes inside your product, really easy to organize if you maybe can't afford getting like a, pro, you know, a proper product um, packaging done, is on there say, hey, um, as part of your product, we'd like to send you or offer you a free ebook, um, to do that, just go to our website here and you can download it for free. Nice, and make sure guys, make sure you do not ask for a review at the same time of offering something for free. That will be classed as incentivized reviews. If Amazon ever see that, it's against terms of service, they will not like you very much, they will shut you down, okay? So make sure that anything where it's related to reviews is completely separate to anything that was related to anything for free or any upsells or anything like that, okay? So what they can do is that customer can then go on your website, you can have like a support website, you can make it really, really cheaply and very, very easily, very quickly as well. And on there, you can have your ebook for people to read or download or whatever, okay? The other way to do it is on there say, hey, if you'd like to receive your free ebook, just email us at and like ebook at your company name and we'll automatically email you the ebook in return, okay? Um, you know, no questions asked. So you can set up an email follow-up sequence, you can set up an email capture. So anytime someone sends you an email, it's like an out of office reply basically, and it'll email back the uh, the ebook. So you can do that. There's loads of different ways to do it. Those are just a couple of ways. Um, I would look down maybe the, the website route because then you can bring people to your website. You can maybe show them other products or even if you don't have other products, you can actually set up a page and sell other people's products, like, you know, recommended products for you. So if you're selling, for example, like a camera stand or something, you could then say, hey, look, this works really well with the you know, the Canon G7X Mark II, and you can have an affiliate link for Amazon to buy the, the actual product. So you can monetize in a few different ways if you want to, right? That's fine to do that. What it's not fine to do is offer the ebook or offer anything that you're gonna to email to them, like uh, instructions in return for a review. You do not wanna do that. You don't even wanna put them in the same email because if Amazon find out, they do not like that, it's incentivized reviews, okay? Even if the product is free, even if the actual bundle, the accessory is free, you're still incentivizing someone to leave a review. What you are allowed to do is say, hey, look, if you've enjoyed your experience, we'd love to hear a, we'd love to hear your feedback on Amazon. No, that's fine, that's, there's no problem with doing that. So the other one is out of stock or delay notifications and offers um, of alternate products uh, please cancel you know, the order instead. So basically, no upsells, no upsells, no downsells, no free stuff, no customer service, no order shipments, uh, and no feedback requests at all. So that's basically, that really rules out a lot of why we wanna contact people. However, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You know, Although a lot of people will have this kind of opt-out opt turned on, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna get reviews. It just means that some people that don't wanna be bothered aren't gonna be bothered. And to be honest with you, you don't wanna bother those people. If those people are opting out of emails because they don't wanna be emailed by Amazon, you don't want to be emailing them because you're gonna give them a bad experience. They're gonna think that you're spamming and they're gonna leave you bad reviews. So actually, this is really a blessing in disguise because you don't want to be targeting emails to people that don't want them. You only wanna target emails to people that want them, that are gonna you know, find value out of it, and that are gonna help you grow your business. So hopefully that makes sense because I see loads of people get really flustered about this, especially in all my Amazon groups. It's like, oh, we, you know, I keep getting this message, you know, message un undeliverable. 
Don't worry about it. Focus on the people that do get the message. Focus on the actual email itself to make it as high converting as possible. And don't worry about the people that don't receive it. Just make sure that you are not promoting something that is delivered by email, okay? And you're not really going in and saying, oh, you're gonna get this like amazing thing. It's one of our key features. Just have it as like a little extra like in your description. It's not a big thing. It's not a big deal. And then for all those people that don't even read the description, which is the majority of people, they're gonna receive this awesome thing via email with loads of support, some FAQ, they didn't even ask for it. And they're gonna be like, oh, that's really cool. Thank you so much. I'm gonna leave a review. Perfect, that's what we want. We wanna have a good service for our customers. So guys, if that, if that has made sense, then I want you to smash the like button. Hopefully it will make sense for a lot of people. Um, of course, you know, this email, you can read the rest of it, but it's, you don't really need to read the rest of it. It shows you how to message people on Seller Central, which if you have Seller Central, you, you're gonna understand this is it's quite easy to do. Um, if you have any questions that relate to this that maybe I haven't quite answered it, you know, specifically to your situation or circumstances, leave it in the comments down below. I'm more than happy to get back to you. Um, if you don't want to share that publicly, then of course you can email me info at johnnybradley.com and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you are subscribed with those notifications turned on if you're new here. And of course, I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.